Hello friends, last May 23, Pixelmator Pro 3.6, codenamed Archipelago, was released with all new masking capabilities, which Pixelmator says is designed to make it easier for beginners and faster for pros. But is it really a big update? That's what we're going to be answering in today's video as we run through the four best features of Pixelmator Pro 3.6 for editing your photos. At number one is masking operations. While this was not mentioned at all in Pixelmator's press release, I truly believe this is the most useful feature as it greatly simplifies local masking, putting it more in line with Photomator's capabilities. Before we go into masking operations, let's review the old way masking was done, which was limited to one mask per layer. To demonstrate, let's work with this image. The sky is a bit overexposed here. Let's reduce the brightness by using a gradient to mimic the effect of a graduated filter. First, I'll add an adjustment layer. Next, I'll add a mask. I'll click on the gradient tool. Since the exposure adjustment is supposed to primarily affect just the sky, Ensure that the gradient transitions from white to black with the transition taking place around the horizon. There, the mask looks good. Unfortunately though, the gradient is incorrectly darkening the couple in addition to the sky. To fix that, let's modify the mask. With the image layer selected, I'll use Select Subject to select the couple. With the mask layer selected, I'll paint black on the selection. There, the mask is fixed. As you can see, the adjustment is correctly affecting just the sky and excluding the couple. So that is the old method. As you may have noticed, it involves a lot of steps, which could be further simplified. Well, the good news is, in 3.6, this masking process is now much easier thanks to the ability to combine masks with masking operations. To demonstrate, let's work with the same image. The initial steps are the same as before. First, I'll create the gradient mask. Next, I'll mask the couple. As you can see, in the new version, you can now add multiple masks to a layer. There are now two masks inside the adjustment layer. Unfortunately though, adding the second mask has made the result worse. The couple is now darker than before. Why is this so? The reason is, both these masks are being combined via an add operation. The pixels of the couple's mask at the top are being added to the pixels of the gradient mask at the bottom. This is producing a mask in which both the pixels of the sky and the couple are in white, which is producing the incorrect adjustment. Unfortunately, as of this version, Pixelmator Pro has no way of showing the calculated mask as you can do with Affinity Photo. So how do we fix it then? What we want is to have the pixels of the sky in white while having the pixels of the couple in black. The solution is to change the operation from add to intersect. The intersect operation creates the mask based on the common pixels present in each mask. As you can see, it produces the correct result. The adjustment is now affecting just the sky while excluding the couple. If this is confusing, don't worry. We're going to be discussing masking operations in future videos, so do watch out for that. Suffice to say, the ability to combine masks has tremendous applications and brings Pixelmator Pro's masking more in line with Photomator. At number two is vector masks. To demonstrate the benefit of this new feature, let's work with this image. 
the foreground is a bit underexposed. Let's target it by creating a precise mask. First, I'll create an adjustment layer. Next, I'll create a mask for the subject. With the image layer selected, I'll press Q to bring out the Quick Selection tool. I'll click Select Subject. Next, I'll create a mask. Instead of right-clicking, I'll use the new Add a New Mask button. I'll click Add Mask. There, the new mask is created. Unfortunately, there are some errors. No problem. With the mask layer selected, I'll paint black on the problem areas. Next, let's mask the tree. For this, I'll use the quick selection brush. With the image layer selected, brush on the tree. Next, with the adjustment layer selected, add the mask. There, the mask of the tree is created. Next, let's mask the rest of the ground. As the ground areas have similar brightness to the immediate surroundings, this might pose a problem for the quick selection brush. No problem, I'll use the new vector masking tool to handle it. I'll click Add New Mask button. I'll choose Draw with Pen. To mask, click around the outline of the object just as you would do with the polygonal selection tool. Click the first point to end the masking process. Notice that the mask has been created. Once again, we have multiple masks under the adjustment layer. As mentioned, these three masks will be added together to form a new mask. While we can't see the resultant mask, we know the mask is correct because the adjustment works great. Aside from the pen tool, Pixelmator Pro's new vector masking allows for using other shapes to easily create cutouts for icons and thumbnails. So that was vector masks. Let's move on to the third improvement. The third improvement is subject masks. Pixelmator Pro now works like Photomator in the way you can get a subject mask. Let's demonstrate with this image. In the older version, to get a mask of the subject, you had to do the following. Press Q to click Select Subject. Right-click the layer. Click Add Mask. In the current version, the number of steps has been reduced. To get a subject mask, click on the Add New Mask button. Click Hide Background. And that's it. The subject mask is created. So much easier. So there you have it. Three improvements in Pixelmator Pro 3.6 Archipelago for photo editing. Is it a big improvement? Definitely yes. The compound mask and mask operations greatly simplifies the process of creating complex masks. And the new vector masking, particularly the pen tool, is definitely a great alternative as we've demonstrated in our example. Let me know what your thoughts are on this new release. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.